So, uh, so first of all, just a few words about mm -hmm. architecture. So, um, I, I don't know what that term means for you. Um, this is uh, I, I tried to find one uh, one one humorous perspective on it. I, I think this is how some people. Uh, might think when they hear the word architecture, they cringe, thinking it's going to be uh, a long list of user requirements. Not a, not forgetting to include uh, the requirement for easy to use as this. Uh, uh, but but my view is we're not at the point where we can uh, stand up and say this is the architecture. But we can talk about a few principles. I think that can govern our work as as we move forward. Uh, and I'll, let me just uh, present three of them. Then we'll uh, demonstrate some capabilities that we think are, uh, can be relevant to uh, NDS goals. And, and then finally, sort of basically ask you to engage with us in contributing uh, user stories and, uh, and uh, experimentation with, with alternatives. Um, first principle that I, I, I believe very strongly in is this one of uh, reducing uh, data friction. So. Of course, we've heard already uh, many uh, perspectives on, on data and, and certainly the importance of curation and business models. Uh, these are all uh, vital issues to address, but, but I do also believe that there's a lot of data out there that, like this boulder, is, is actually people want to make available, but it's just too much trouble, too much uh, hassle to, uh, to go the extra step and, and make it, put it somewhere where it can be accessed. So I, I think uh, there's a lot to be said for uh, uh, adopting uh, technologies in a national data service that will make publish, publication of data in some form the default rather than the exception. Uh, Clay Shirky uh, talks about uh, how the, uh, the publishing industry has transitioned from a, to some extent, from a filter then publish to a publish then filter model because blogs, uh, Twitter, other social media have made it so easy for people to get their ideas out there. So I think uh, one thing we should be looking at uh, in our architecture uh, is uh, technologies that make it trivial uh, to get the data somewhere where others can access it. And, and one way that uh, we can pursue that is uh, I've been people have mentioned during at least hallway discussions is is the use of uh, cloud hosted software as a service. We no longer need to uh, engage deeply in uh, deploying and operating sophisticated sophisticated software stacks uh, in order to uh, perform useful activities and we'll demonstrate uh, one example of such sorts of software in a minute. Uh, second principle uh, so I'm, I'm, so far I'm using lots of buzzwords from book titles, small pieces loosely joined. So I think we're probably mostly familiar with that. Uh, we have, our challenge our, and our opportunity is to integrate many uh, existing and often very powerful software components and services. Um, and I just list a few classes of such uh, components uh, on, on this slide. There are many, uh, many more uh, th that I, uh, that I do not have time to include. And so the challenge we face is to work out how to make these small or sometimes large pieces uh, interoperate and work together. And, and you know, one way that uh, we've certainly uh, found works well and the community as a whole is, I, I think at least in, in many spaces, the web space have embraced is uh, simple REST interfaces, open interfaces that can be discovered and used by others, uh, simple interfaces, uh, interfaces that are composable, uh, extensible, versioned, so that we can very easily uh, build um, components together. And so this is a, a picture that some of you may have seen uh, prepared by uh, uh, some, some participants in the NDS activity, uh, in fact in the context of this DIBS proposal that was mentioned, but uh, emphasizing the, our focus on working out how as quickly and as easily, but also as reliably and securely as possible, we can tie together existing pieces uh, in order to allow us to uh, make uh, rapid progress. And, and then, so it's two principles. The third one, uh, uh, insist on stories. Uh, you know, I'm, I think we've all got ideas here of what we want uh, in NDS to do. Some of them are very crisp. Um, very detailed, some very urgent in the sense that if we can't do this thing then we, we're going to fail in, in our science. Um, others are perhaps more vague and, and ill-defined. I think we need to really be insisting on identifying the simple, uh, 
detailed, urgent, and popular, if you like, stories that we can then uh, work to engage and support in our national data service. And I, my pre preference would be to start with the simple things first, things like um, I need to store my data somewhere where I can still find it next week, or I, I need to transfer my data from one place to another. Uh, I need to assign an identifier to this data. These are pretty primitive, basic operations, but they are still far too uh, difficult. They're the friction, often, I think, in, 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 in terms of uh, uh, the work that we, people want, want to undertake. Uh, so those are three rather, you, hopefully, uh, useful principles, uh, certainly not too profound. Um, the good news, of course, is that we have a huge amount of uh, technologies uh, to build on and integrate with. And, and when people, uh, you know, one response to a, a discussion of national data services is to say, well, we've been trying to do that for a long time and we haven't succeeded. Well, but things are different now. And in, in one way they're different is that uh, we have a huge amount of experience in software and services that are out there. So I put a few of them on this uh, slide, and we've heard others mentioned uh, today. And you know, I could there's probably hundreds if we try to detail all of them. Some will end up being deeply useful, others less useful. Uh, some will be useful immediately, some useful uh, later. But these are all uh, things that I, I think we uh, have the tremendous uh, benefit of of being able to uh, to build on. So uh, at this point, we thought uh, it would be useful to actually show some software, show a service that uh, we've been developing, the Globus uh, uh, services. Uh, and, and the point of showing this is not to say this is the uh, be all and end all, but to emphasize the idea that we have things that we can use today uh, to undertake some useful functions relating to uh, national data services. So what we're going to show here is the uh, a set of uh, Globus services. So how many of you here are Globus service users? Some, so that's good, good. It would be, be very scary if I asked that and no one answered. That would, be, that would show you were asleep, not that you weren't using them, I'm sure. Um, so this is, a, this is a, I think, a thing that we, and certainly we're not alone in this, but uh, we've been uh, pushing uh, hard on for the last few years, which is, uh, working out how to use the power of cloud-hosted software as a service uh, to reduce data friction, basically, by taking uh, time-consuming, uh, mundane, often routine, routine but automatable uh, activities and delivering them as cloud services. And, and we've been pretty thrilled with how these uh, activities have worked out. So the, we started off with data transfer, synchronization, added sharing, uh, identity and group management uh, under the covers, which, uh, as, uh, as uh, Ed mentioned, is now being adopted by uh, the Exceed project, is being adopted by a number of other national projects. Adding most recently, uh, and this is still a pilot activity, data publication uh, and discovery. Um, that's all the cloud-hosted stuff that we, uh, that we have, and we're going to show it to you. Uh, and then Globus Connect software, which allows you to take a storage system and basically connect it into uh, at least a national data service. It's not the only national data service, but it's one that provides some useful capabilities. So what we're going to show now is uh, basically uh, what we're doing on data publication and discovery. So uh, we have uh, about 70 people here. We probably have probably at least 50 definitions of publication. Um, but let me uh, say you know, what it means to us. Uh, when we publish data, it means that we assign it an identifier. We describe it in some manner. Um, uh, we probably engage in some curation process by which uh, uh, it is uh, checked, perhaps, uh, ver to verify its subject. It, uh, it is consistent with community uh, uh, or collection um, uh, norms. Uh, we've got some means of verifying that it doesn't change over time, perhaps a checksum. It's accessible uh, to people, and it's preserved, where preserved, of course, is the meaning of preserved is one of the most uh, uh, ill-defined and contentious issues. I won't get into, into that. If anyone asks about preservation, I say that's a policy issue. Um, it's not a technical issue. So, um, and what does it mean to discover data? Well, it means that we can search for it, browse it uh, and access it once we've uh, accessed it. So what I'm going to show you, what we're going to show you now, and Steve will come up in just a second, is uh, a quick demo of how the, how we are 
we have been, we are deploying a set of cloud-hosted services that allow communities um, to uh, uh, define uh, data collections. Uh, oops, this is within those data collections, create data sets containing data and metadata. Um, uh, define uh, subject uh, to policies um, that are collection community specific, relating, for example, to what metadata is required, uh, what access control policies govern access to uh, published data, um, what license uh, is associated with the data, uh, where the data is stored, um, and uh, what curation workflow should be followed. These are all pretty straightforward things, but if you try and implement them yourselves, uh, it's not so easy to put in place. We, we will show you how, uh, basically, with using the power of cloud-hosted software as a service, you can uh, basically totally automate uh, these activities. Um, so Steve, where are you? Come, come on up and uh, we'll show you. This, pro the pro this part of what we're showing is um, still somewhat of a prototype, but uh, and, and it, as we may mention it, it leverages some elements of Globus, some elements of uh, a technology called DSpace. But it really is uh, uh, quite neat, I think. So this is, uh, we're now at the Globus homepage. Uh, if you, I like to stare at the counters uh, stopping, passing by, but I, I gather it's not as popular with others as I might like. But you want your maps. Yeah. <laughs> maps are rare. So um, we're basically going to log in and, and uh, just to emphasize uh, uh, what uh, Ed mentioned, uh, using uh, in common, uh, we're actually logging in uh, using uh, the University of Chicago credential here. We're now connected to the Globus uh, services. Um, tell right, me, I mean, why, do you, why don't you do this part? Yeah, so, so I was just going to show briefly, you know, Ian talked about the um, sort of building up small components that we can keep putting together in interesting ways. And so over the last several years, we've been tackling the problem of, I got a lot of data, how do I get it around to the various places? How do I transfer it to places? How do I share it with other users? How do I manage access control? Right, so as an example of that, with Globus, you know, I can log in, go out to a machine, you know, storage system that's been connected into this cloud, you know, with the Globus Connect software Ian mentioned, and say, I want to take a folder, and let's actually kind of export it out to other users, right? So I'll say, let's share this thing out. Um, we call it creating a shared endpoint, so I'll call it my share. And you'll see how this gets used in just a moment as we move into the publication services. But in effect, what we've got is an infrastructure that allows for very rich control and sharing of big data from your own storage systems, wherever they are, campuses, cloud, your laptops, whatever. Right, so I can say things like, let's share this folder to Ian. Or I can say, let's, I've got a, a group, a, a group defined um, with my team, so I can look that up and say, you know, things like, the search comes back, um, you know, share to my Globus team group, right? And I can say read, writable, these sorts of things. And in doing so, I, I've now made it, even though people on this team do not have direct accounts on this system, things like that, they can still get access to it. So if I flip over here, go in as SJT, which is a member of that Globus team group, I can now get to that file system, you know, which that's the same thing as this folder over here. All right, I can go to it and I can start moving data in and out of there. I can say take a file and transfer it out to my, my SJT's account out at NERSC. Right? So we've been building up this infrastructure for handling the big data sharing with permissions, access control, all these sort of things. But as we talked about, we, you know, we saw this need and you know, the, the user story we kept hearing as we were showing this to people was from campuses saying, that's great, but can I use this for uh, making the data available associated with my publications, right? So the use case essentially at the core of what, you know, what, what we're doing next is say, I just published a paper. I need to make this data available associated with that paper. How can we provide a service to campuses or projects that makes it you know, trivial for you to sort of manage that process for your users to provide a system that does that. And so we're now adding, now what I'm shifting into as the, the new prototype, um, is a service where I can, oops, let me get in the right browser window here, um, right, where I can log into a data publication service. And in effect, what we've done is taken 
these capabilities of big data sharing that we've had and starting to combine them with tools like, in this case, DSpace, for managing the processes of publishing and curation, you know, the human workflows around that. Right, so I can say things like, you know, start a submission, find what collections I have access to. So I'll just, you know, whack through one here real quick. So I can publish into a particular, you know, I can request publication into a particular um, space, you know, title, NDS meeting, um, you know, just making up stuff here just to fill in the fields. You notice there's, there's a reference to ORCID, so a, a short-term task will be to integrate with the uh, an ORCID uh, lookup uh, service. And a key thing that Ian mentioned was being able to also, as a, at the collection level, not just define standards or Dublin Core style metadata, but allow collections to specify metadata that's relevant to that collection. So if I have a science community specific collection, I can put stuff in here, you know, keywords, you know, in this case, like lithium, lithium ion batteries and sponsors NSF and various descriptions. Right. So, you know, I can publish things. You know, this is sort of standard D space. Now where it goes a little beyond standard D space is now assembling data, right? So we have a model where combining it with global storage, I can now sort of bring together the data from wherever it is uh, to construct you know, my, my data set. So I can say move some data in, I can organize it however I want. Right, so I can say create some folders, and I refresh this, right? So I'm starting to construct up my data set, right? And it's up to the collection to define the policies on this, right? Where, where do I want it stored? What storage systems to use? What sort of requirements I have on the data sets? What data needs to be in there? Organizations of them? You know, whatever they want to do from a collection curation sort of policies perspective, all good, right? So then I can basically go ahead and publish that, right? So we've essentially combined the big data handling of Globus with the publication aspects of DSpace and created this capability where I can do all that, right? And so I just submitted a request into a publication as another user. I can, uh, let's see if I'm still logged in over here. Yep, so now we see that publication I just did. I can now curate it, right? I can accept it. I can look at the data, do what I want to do from a curation perspective, eventually approve it, right? And then the last step, of course, is the discovery side. So I can also do things like say, I want to search for data. And so the second half of what we're doing is expanding upon you know, what DSpace is capable of doing and adding much richer search capabilities across collections and that sort of thing. So I can say things like, you know, let's go out to specific collections or even all collections and search for you know, we'll search for lithium. You know, this, I know this collection, we have collections out here related to battery uh, materials, right? So I can be looking for stuff. I can be doing off of typed metadata. So I can say things like, you know, let's look for things, lithium with energy density, then if I can pronounce spell, density greater than a thousand, right? So live searching, and then I can always traverse back to the data sets see the metadata, sort of the home page for that, has its DOI and everything there, and download it back to my machines, again, using the Globus tools with access control and all that sort of stuff. Right, so that's the, the demo. I'll let Ian wrap up here. Thanks, Steve. So uh, just one last slide. So. Um, one last slide. So, so uh, sort of takeaway messages. Um, you know, we we believe strongly that uh, getting uh, a right, to, taking a, the right approach to architecture is is key to the success of these national data services that we're talking about. Um, but uh, we also believe strongly that we need to uh, move incrementally in that uh, direction. And so, uh, principles: reducing data friction. Uh, uh, a uh, web-based uh, uh, REST API uh, sort of in, uh, architecture, and, and insisting on, on, on crisp stories as a means of uh, informing where we uh, uh, put, out, put our e effort uh, as we move forward. Uh, important to realize that we have strong components to build on. We've shown you just a few here, and of course there are, there are many others. And, and what we want uh, from the community, from you, is uh, you know, basically, good stories. What are things that you want to do uh, today, tomorrow, next week, maybe a little bit further in the future, but not too far, uh, that we can use to uh, in, inform our work? And of course, we want volunteers to uh, to uh, stand up and start uh, de deploying uh, and and uh, and evaluating uh, te technologies. Uh, thank you very much.